Hi everyone, we will continue the cardiovascular system. We are in part number three. We will discuss about the heart muscle and its conduction system. Okay, cardiac muscle is also known as a myocardium, myo mean muscle, cardium mean the heart. So the cardiac muscles, if we compare with the skeletal muscle, is uh, shorter. Therefore, its cardiac muscle only have one central nucleus, and we will be able to see the border between one cardiac muscle with another cardiac muscle. And this border is known as intercalated disc. The okay? intercalated disc is the border between one cardiac muscle with another cardiac muscle. In that between the muscles, okay, in the intercalated disc, the one cardiac muscle with another cardiac muscle is actually has a connection and they able to exchange the uh, plasms between these two muscle with a junction is called the gap junction. So gap junction is like a hole between one muscle to another muscle. So the electricity, for example, will be able to pass through this gap junction. So this is one of a special structure in the cardiac muscle. Uh, in the heart, the cardiac muscles in the middle also form what we call the syncytium that separate the heart into left and right side. In the atrial area, the syncytium is called the atrial syncytium, separated the right atrium with the left atrium. In the ventricular area, the syncytium is called the ventricular syncytium, separated the right ventricle with the left ventricle. The cardiac conduction system consists of five systems. The first one is called the sinoatrial node or SA node, and this is our natural pacemaker. So this sinoatrial node is actually a group of muscle in the right atrium that will start contractions of the heart muscle. So just remember, the heart muscle is actually contracted by itself. It is called the auto uh, rhythm. It will contract it by itself without any order from our nervous system, without any order from our brain. So this is how the heart muscle contracted. It is started from the SA node or the pacemaker. Okay. So this is the reason why if someone have a problem with their natural pacemaker, Sometimes, you know, the doctor will give them the artificial pacemaker that is controlled by a battery. Okay, so to start the heart contraction. Now, from the SA node or from the pacemaker, the contraction will be sent to the left atrium. Remember, the pacemaker located on the right atrium then this contraction will be sent to the uh, 
uh, left atrium using the internodal atrial muscle. Okay, so therefore, the two atria will be contracted at the same time. And when these two atria contracted, it will press the blood down into the ventricle. Okay, so this is the first contraction, which is the contraction of the atria left and right, starting from the pacemaker. Okay, after the atrial contraction, then this electricity, this impulses will be carried into the AV node, atrioventricular node, using this junctional fiber. Okay, in the atrial node, okay, when the electricity or the impulse is sent to the AV node, the atrium then will relax. Okay, so the atrium contracted when the SA not perform the contraction. Then when it is sent, the impulse is to AV node, the atrium will be relaxed. Okay, therefore there is a delay between the atrial contraction over here with the ventricular contraction over here, okay? So from the AV node, the impulses will be sent to the ventricle, okay? Go to the atrioventricular ventricular bundles. And these impulses will be spread into the left and right bundle of branches, the one that will go to the left and right ventricle, and then go to the smaller, fiber is called the 14 G fiber. And then over here, okay, the ventricle will be contracted. So it's a strong contraction over here. So if you see these two contraction, which is the atrial contraction, okay, uh, will follow, will be followed by the ventricular contraction, okay? And there is a little bit delay over here between the atrial contraction and ventricular contractions. And this delay happening when the impulse reach the AV node, okay? Therefore, when our muscle, cardiac muscle contracted, there is actually two contraction. The first one is the atrial contraction, and after that, atrial will be relaxed. It will be followed by the ventricular contraction. And then after that, the ventricle will be relaxed. It will be followed by the atrial contraction. So when we measure the blood pressure, we will get the number like 120 over 80. So 120 is actually measure the blood pressure during ventricular contraction. It's a strong contraction, give you number about 120. And then when the ventricle relax, okay, atrial will be contracted, there still be a pressure, and the pressure usually gonna be lower, which is around 80. And this is what we call the diastole. Okay, so diastole measure during the ventricular relaxation and the systole is measured during the ventricular contraction. So you get the 120 over 80. This is coming from the ventricular contraction and then ventricular relaxation. Okay, now we're gonna look at this diagram, how that contraction began. Again, it started from the SA node over here. It's a group of cardiac muscles on the right atrium that will 
be contracted first. It's give about 100 bit per minute. So it's higher than our normal uh, heart beating. Okay? From here, then the contraction will be sent into the left side of the atrium. Therefore, both the right atrium and the left atrium muscle will be contracted at the same time. So there is a contraction on the atrium, okay, right and left. When this atrium contracted, then the blood will be pushing down to the ventricle. Then the impulses will be sent into the AV node. So there will be delay. Okay, so delay over here. And then from the epi node, the impulses will be sent into the epi bundles. Okay, and then from the epi bundle will be sent into left and right branches. And then finally go to the Parkinji fibers. Okay, and then when the impulses, impulses come to this ventricle muscle, then the ventricle will be contracted, okay? And this is gonna be strong contraction to push the blood away from the heart, go to the whole body or go to the, uh, the lungs. Okay, so again, there are two contractions. The first contraction will be atrial contraction, a little bit delay, which is, the atrial will be relaxed and then continue with the ventricle contraction. Okay, so this is also show you the sequence of this impulses and contraction, starting from the SA node, go to the atrial syncytium. So it's gonna be sent the contraction or the impulses from the right to the left atrium. At the same time, and the impulses will go also, will also send into the AP node using this junctional fiber. And there will be delay over here in the AP node. The impulse will be sent to the AP bundle, branching into the bundle branching, and then finally reach the Farkinji fiber. And then it's sent to left and right ventricle. The ventricle then will be contracted. So over here, atrial contraction. Here, going to be stronger contraction, which is the uh, ventricular contraction. And during this ventricular contraction, we measure the systole. And over here, atrial contraction, this is going to be the same as the ventricular relaxation we will measure the diastole. Okay, that's the cycle of uh, cardiac muscle conduction. This diagram showing you how the cardiac muscles look like. So it's a, actually twisted a long muscle. So there will be one muscle over here, intercalated these and other muscles, they all combine together to make this twisted muscle okay, on the heart. So therefore, when the uh, ventricle contracted, there will be also kind of twisting contraction, not just pressing contraction, but also twisting the heart chamber. The electrical chains during cardiac muscle conductions can be measured during uh, using a unit called the EKG or ECG, electrocardiogram. So it's actually measuring the electricity. Mostly it will measure the concentration of sodium 
and then calcium and potassium in our body. Okay, so during that cycle, the sodium, calcium, and potassium will change their concentration, uh, concentration during this cardiac cycle. And in the AKG, we will have three type of wave. Okay. The first one is called the P wave. And this actually showing the sodium levels increase. And that process is called the atrial depolarization. So this one, so if we make a Uh, graph. Okay. So the during the atrial depolarization, the sodium channel will be open, and then sodium will entering into our cell, and it will increase the concentration of sodium. Okay, and then until it reaches the top then the sodium channel will be closing and then the sodium level will be decreasing. So we have the first peak over here or wave and this is what we call the P wave. Okay, so the P wave measure the concentration of sodium. After the sodium channel close, then the calcium channel will be opening and it will increase so much, it will give you so high of the peak. Okay? This is what we call the QRS wave. And this is actually measure the calcium concentrations in our cell. And then after that, the calcium channel will be closed. And then the muscle started to uh, open the potassium channel and then potassium will be increasing and it will be measured as the T wave. Okay, so there are, there will be three peaks or wave during this EKG measurement. The first wave is called the P wave and then the second one is QRS and the last one is T uh, wave. Okay, so this is the cycle that will be shown in the EKG during our uh, cardiac cycle. Okay, so we're gonna look at these diagrams in EKG paper. So again, when the sodium channel opens, the sodium will be increasing. If it is happening when the atrium start to fill with blood okay, from the vena cava, inferior vena cava and uh, superior vena cava and also from coronary sinus, will bring the blood to the atrium. Okay. On the left side, yeah, the pulmonary veins also will carry blood to the left atrium. Okay. So when it is filled, it's actually during the uh, sodium channel opening. So sodium channel opening, sodium concentration will be increasing. Then we have this first wave over here. Okay. So when the blood is full, okay, the wave is going down, sodium channel uh, close, sodium will be decreased, but at that time, the atrium, right atrium and left atrium will be contracted. It will push the blood down to the ventricle, okay, right ventricle and also the left ventricle. And the calcium channel will be opening at that time. So the calcium will be increasing okay, during the time where the blood 
filling the ventricle from the atrium. Now, when the uh, blood fill up the ventricles, okay, the calcium channel will be closed. Okay, so on the QRS wave over here will be going down because the calcium concentration is going down. And then after that, the ventricle will be contracted. And it will pump the blood okay, from the ventricle to the aorta and also to the pulmonary trunk. So it is happening after the QRS. And after that, the calcium channel close, potassium channel will be open, okay? And the cell will be negative because potassium actually will be out from the cell, okay? Potassium is positive ion. So the cell become negative. When the cell negative, it will be relaxed. So the ventricle will be relaxing. And then at that time, calcium channel, because it is opening, it will increase the concentration and it will be shown in the EKG as a T wave. Okay, so you have P wave showing the concentration of sodium and then QRS wave showing the concentration of calcium and the T wave showing the concentration of potassium. And then after that, it's going back again to the opening of sodium channel. Okay? And then the blood will be entering into the atrium, going down the ventricles, and continuously like that. Okay? And then each cycle okay, from the increase of sodium depolarization okay, uh, until the next depolarization will take about 0 0.8 millisecond. Okay, so 0 0.8 millisecond. And this is one cycle of cardiac muscle contraction. So diastole, systole, diastole, systole. This is one cycle. It takes about 0 0.8 millisecond normally. So this is for healthy uh, heart cycle. It takes about 1.8 millisecond per one cycle. And it is also showing if somebody, for example, has a very fast cycle, may, maybe 0 0.4, for example, less than 0 0.8, it is showing that the heart beating is faster than normal. So maybe people with the tachycardia, they will have EKG cycle at normal, one cycle less than 0 0.8. If someone, for example, have bradycardia, which is slow heart rate, then the cycle may be take longer than 0 0.8 milliseconds, maybe about 0 uh, point, uh, 0.9 or 1.2 uh, millisecond per cycle. So it actually measures the normal heart beating using this EKG. Okay, now we're gonna learn a little bit about the heart sound. Okay, usually if you measure or if you uh, listen to the heart beating, you will hear the lap dab sound. Okay, lap dab, lap dab. Okay, where is the lap and dab sound coming from? Okay, so if we again learn about the heart structure, okay, it has four chamber, okay, two chamber on the top, it's called the atria, so right atria, left atria. Two chamber at the bottom, right ventricle, 
and left ventricle. And there is connection between right atrium with the right ventricle and the left atrium with the left ventricle. Okay, that connection using what we call the valve. Okay, both of this valve is called the AV valve. Okay, AV means atrio ventricular. Okay, atrio ventricular valve, the valve that's located between atrium and ventricle. The AV valve on the right side between right atrium and right ventricle is called the tricuspid valve. Okay, the AV valve on the left side between left atrium and left ventricle is called the mitral or bicuspid valve okay so remember when the atria contracted it will send the blood down to the ventricle it will open this av valve the tricuspid and bicuspid valve at the same time okay so then the blood will be filling up to the ventricle and then when it is filled out, then the ventricle start to contract it, okay? Perform the contraction to pump the blood out, okay? From the left ventricle, it will send the blood through the aorta, okay? On the right side, the right ventricle, it will send the blood to the pulmonary Okay, now between left ventricle and aorta, there is also valve, okay, which is kind of door. And then between right ventricle and pulmonary trunk, there is also valve. And both of these valve is called the semilunar valve. But it look like half moon. Okay, so my mean half lunar mean moon. So half moon valve. And okay, the semi lunar valve that located between left ventricle and aorta is called aortic valve. Okay, so this is aortic valve. And the semi lunar valve that's located between right ventricle and pulmonary trunk is called the pulmonary valve. Okay, the name is actually the same as the name of the blood vessel. Okay, between aorta and left ventricle is called the aortic valve. Between pulmonary trunk and right ventricle is called the pulmonary valve. Okay, now. Okay, we go back to this process. Okay, when the right atrium and left atrium contracted, it will send the blood down to the ventricle. At this time, the AV valve, tricuspid and bicuspid valve will be open. And then the blood will fill the ventricles. From the ventricle, the blood will be sent, okay, will be pumped to the aorta and pulmonary trunk. So there will be ventricle contraction over here, okay? ventricular contraction. Now, when the ventricle contract, it will open the semilunar valve because there is a pushing. Okay? At, the, at the same time, this contraction is actually will close, will close the AV valve. Okay, just like you have a, you open one door with your hand and you close okay, the other that where your leg. Okay, you kind of kick the door on uh, with your leg, and it the door will be closed, which is the AV valve, the tricuspid, and bicuspid valve will be closed. When these two door or this valve close it will give the son of labor. 
Okay, you will hear the lab sound. So the lab sound is actually coming from the closing of the two heavy valve. Okay, and then the blood will go out from the ventricle through this aortic valve and pulmonary valve. When the blood is empty in the ventricle, then the ventricle will be relaxed. When the ventricle relaxes, the pulmonary valve and aortic valve will be closed at the same time automatically. But it will also give the sound. And the sound of the closing of the semilunar valve, the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve is called the dub sound. Okay, you see, you hear the lap dub sound, and this actually coming from the closing of the valves in the heart. The lap is coming from the closing of the AV valve, and the dub is coming from the closing of the semilunar valve. If someone have a problems with this valve, sometimes the doctor will hear the flowing, uh, the, the sound of the flowing water or blood. And this is what we call the heart murmur. Uh, this is telling the doctor or telling us that the valve is not properly closed. Okay, so this is the diagram that's showing you the location of the valve and the sound they're coming from. So this, this is the two AV valve. Uh, on the right side is the tricuspid and the left side is bicuspid valve. When it is closing, okay, because of the ventricular contraction over here, it will close this two door it will give the sound of uh, lab, okay? It's a lab sound coming from this closing. And at the same time, when the ventricle contracting, it will open this door, okay? The uh, pulmonary valve and also the aortic valve. You cannot see the aortic valve because it is behind this pulmonary trunk. And then after the blood is empty, these two valves, okay, the pulmonary valve and the aortic valve will be closing and give you the dump sound. So lab dump, lab dump, lab dump, lab dump, like that. Okay, so this is the uh, where the sound is coming. Okay, now we're going to learn changing during the cardiac cycle. Okay, again, this is happening when the atrium contracted. Okay, the AV valves will be uh, openings over here okay and then the blood will be entering into the ventricle boom and then when it is entering the ventricle then ventricle will contracting okay when the ventricle contracted it will close the av valve and give the sound of lab Okay, lab sound over here. And if we look at the concentration of sodium, calcium, and potassium during the atrial systole or atrial contraction, the sodium level will be increased. This is what we call depolarization. And then after that, the QRS wave, which is the calcium level, will be increasing. And then the ventricle will be contracting. At the same time, the so, uh, potassium level will be increasing over here, close to the relaxation of the ventricle. 
Okay, and then this is the pressure okay, with, during the ventricle contraction. The pressure will be increasing normally around 120. So the top over here gives you 120 pressure. And then it's going down, relaxation. It will give you around 80 pressure. So 120, 80. So this is systole and diastole. And then the cycle will uh, continue on the next cycle. Okay, so between one here to here, okay, it takes about 0 0.8 milliseconds. So it's one cycle to another cycle. Okay, this is the lap dub sound is coming from the closing of this two AV valve. And the dub sound is coming from the closing of these two smilunar valves. Okay, now the pressure and the volume change during a cardiac cycle. Okay, during the early ventricular diastole, so this is the same as the atrial systole, okay, contraction. And this is happening when the ventricular relax. So ventricular relaxation is diastole and atrial systole is atrial contraction. Okay, now, during that time, 70% of blood will be flowing down from the atrium passively. This is mostly just uh, because of the gravity. So the blood will be just flowing down into the ventricle. And after that, there will be contraction of the atrium that will empty the atrium and then will press all the blood into the ventricle. Okay, so this atrial systole will push the, the rest, 30% the of blood from atrium into the ventricle. Okay, now in the ventricle, then ventricular pressure will be rises, okay, will be rising, and then the blood will flow into the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. So this is during the uh, ventricular systole. And then when the blood is empty, the pressure will also decrease. And this is happening during the ventricular diastole. And then the blood will fill out the right atrium again in the previous uh, screen. Okay, so the blood will entering into the right atrium. And then 70% will be going down to the ventricles and the atrium will be contracted to send the rest of the blood to the ventricle. And the ventricle will be contracting and send the blood to the pulmonary trunk and also to the aorta. Okay, so this diagram again showing you the right atrium, left atrium, the blood will be flowing down through this door at the atrial ventricular valve, tricuspid and bicuspid. And then from the ventricles, the blood will be pumped through this. This is pulmonary valve and also through this aortic valve. And if you see here, between the right ventricle and left ventricle, the muscles have different thickness. The right ventricle have a thinner muscle. Yeah? The left ventricle has 
thicker muscle. Okay, and again, this is due to their action. The left ventricle send the blood through the whole body, so it cal it it give a stronger contraction. Uh, when the muscle give a stronger contraction, the muscle become bigger. Okay, so need bigger muscle in order to push the blood go to the whole body. While the right ventricle over here, okay, pump the blood to the pulmonary trunk, and from pulmonary trunk will go to the lungs, which is very close to the heart. Therefore, it does not require stronger contraction. So the contraction from the right ventricle is actually weaker compared to the left ventricle. So that's the difference between the thickness of the cardiac muscles on the right ventricle and the left ventricle. Regulation for the cardiac cycle. So remember, the SA node is the primary pacemaker. So the contraction will be started from the SA node, from the pacemaker. But our nervous system also able to control whether the cycle is faster or slower. So we have autonomic nervous system that control the cardiac cycle. Okay, this cardiac center is located in the lower part of our brain is called the medulla oblongata. Therefore, the control is autonomic or automatic uh, using the ANS, autonomic nervous system. And the control center is located in this lower part of our brain, medulla oblongata. There are two types of ANS. Okay. Uh, the first one is called the sympathetic ANS or diffusion. And the second one is parasympathetic ANS or parasympathetic diffusion. Normally, we are under the parasympathetic diffusion control. So this is when our heart's beating is relaxed. Uh, slower, but when we get, for example, angry or uh, scared, then we are under the sympathetic division control. During this time, our heart beating will be increasing, will be faster. Okay, so parasympathetics will be uh, slowing down the heart beating and the sympathetic division will be increasing the heart beating. So these two division is the one that control our uh, cardiac muscle cycle. So again, the parasympathetic impulse will send the information, of course, to the SA node and it will lowering down the heartbeat into normal heartbeat between 60 to 80 beats per minute. In average, normal heartbeat, healthy heartbeat is around 72 beats per minute. Okay, so that's the uh, normal heart beating, around 72 beats per minute. Uh, during sympathetic innervations, it will increase this heartbeat maybe up to 100 beat per minute or more. Uh, so this is during the sympathetic innervation. Uh, we also have the negative feedback system that control our heart beating. So there are several receptors in our system that will sense, yeah, sense the changes in our body. Like for example, we have a baroreceptor located in the aortic arch. So if you see the aorta from the left ventricle is going up and then 
curve like this. Okay. So this aorta will have three main area. The one that's going up from the left ventricle is called the ascending aorta is going up and then is making a arch okay curve and this what we call the arch of aorta okay and then from the arch then the aorta will be going down into our thoracic cavity and also abdominal cavity and this area is called the descending aorta okay so we have the barrel receptor in the arch of the hip, arch of the aorta so the barrel receptor sends the pressure if the pressure lower eh, than normal then this barrel receptor will send the information to our cp center that is located in the medulla oblongata Okay, remember the cardiovascular center located in the lower part of our, of our brain, the medulla oblongata. So the baroreceptor and the art of the aorta will send that information to the CV center. And the CV center then will send information to our heart using the sympathetic innervation to increase the heart rate eh, in order to so if the pressure is increased, okay, so we're going back, if the pressure increase will be sensed by this baroreceptor. Okay, so the, the stimulus increase, okay, pressure increase, send the information to the CV center. Then the CV center will tell the parasympathetic divisions to control to lower the heart beating. Okay. So when the heart beating is lower, then the pressure will be decreased. Okay, so this is what we call the negative feedback system. Uh, on the other way, for example, if the barrel pressure over here sends that the pressure is decreasing, okay, it will also send the information to the CV center. And the CV center will send the information through the sympathetic division and tell the heart muscle to increase the heart beat. When the heart muscle increasing the heart beating, it will increase the pressure. Okay, so this is also what we call the negative feedback system. So this is how the barrel receptor uh, control our heart beating okay, by sensing the pressure. There is also stretch uh, receptor in the vena cava, the one that enter our right atrium. And other factor like for example, our body temperatures, uh, exercise okay, will usually increase the heart beating. Okay, so when we start exercising, then our heart beating will be increasing. So this is a autonomic control. Also, level of potassium. Potassium mostly will reduce our uh, heart beating. Okay, and then calcium mostly will increase our heart. So the level of uh, elect electrolytes in the blood will also control our heart beating or the cardiac cycle. Okay, so this diagram showing you the controls. Again, the primary control is coming from the area in the medulla oblongata. There is a special area is called the cardiac center or CV center that will send the information, whether parasympathetics or sympathetic division. Parasympathetics will control the heart beatings uh, during relaxation. The sympathetics increase the heart beating during a specific condition, like for example, uh, fight, uh, frightened, uh, angry, and etc. Okay, so that's sympathetic. And this cardio center or cardiovascular center receive the information from 
many receptor. One of them is from the barrel receptor that's located in the uh, arch of the aorta, send the information here. There is also another uh, sense uh, receptors located in the carotid artery. Carotid artery is the one that go to the brain. So it has also receptor that telling whether the pressure is increased or decreased because our brain needs a lot of oxygen, needs a lot of blood. So there will be something or receptor that sends that uh, information. So this receptor will also send the information to the cardiovascular center. Some clinical uh, applications. Okay, there is a irregularity of cardiac cycle is called the arrhythmias. So the arrhythmias is a general term from the alter of heart rhythm. Okay, sometimes increase or decrease. Decrease. There are several type of arrhythmias. The first one is called the fibrillation or fibrillation. Uh, this is when the atrial muscles and ventricular muscles uh, contract it uh, irregular. If it is in the atrial muscle, usually it's not life threatening. Okay? But if it is uh, happening in the ventricular muscle, then is, it is a life-threatening, yeah, often causing uh, death because of this irregularity. And the most common one, uh, tachycardia. This is abnormally uh, faster heart beating, mostly in average higher than 100 beats per minute. Okay, this is tachycardia. Uh, the opposite of tachycardia is bradycardia. This is abnormally slow heartbeat. It's lower than 60 beats per minute. Okay, bradycardia. Uh, flutter, this is rapid regular contraction of heart chamber, 250 to 350 beats per minute. Uh, Premature beat, this is uh, the heartbeat that occurs before the expected normal cardiac cycle. And sometimes it can, it's caused by the, what we call the ectopic beating is coming from uh, other than the SA node. So it's coming from other area than the SA node. This is ectopic uh, region. Ectopic pacemaker, it is very similar with the top one. The pacemaker is actually coming from the AV node. Okay, usually AV node will also uh, function as a pacemaker when the SA node is not functional. So for this type of abnormality, the AV node is actually the one that acting as a pacemaker, and this is called the ectopic pacemaker. Artificial pacemaker, this is when a uh, doctor put a artificial device to replace the SA node, and this artificial device uh, will be powered by battery. And usually people that carry the artificial pacemaker, they cannot go to the area that have uh, electrical uh, impulses. Okay, so they have to stay away from area that have electrical impulses because it might causing their battery become uh, stop powering the pacemaker. I think that's all for this part three. So the heart, muscle, and conduction system. We'll meet you again on the next part. Goodbye.